Hey guys, what's going on? <clears throat> Before we get into this video, I just want to apologize that the video is late, of course. Um, I feel like um, it wasn't my fault. I recorded the video on time. However, my computer decided to be an asshole and basically decided to take a shit on its recording system. But it's fixed now, so I can get this recorded, uploaded, um, and um, from now on we're not going to have any more late uploads, so that'll be fine. But anyways, this week we're going up against the Verd, a uh, very threatening coach, and his team, the Adelaide Zydingos. Now, we are 3-2 th um, right now at the top of our division, and this battle <coughs> is going to be kind of significant because um, Chris did pick up a win this week, a uh, pretty significant win, so we have to try to make sure that it doesn't take our divisional place, even though it is pretty early in the season <coughs> to worry about it. Um, playoffs are still significant. So let's just get right into the team that we have. So, um, actually we're going to get into the team that he has. I'm pretty sure this is the dealing sheet, sorry. Uh, but this is the team he has. Um, he has a team of Weavile, Victini, Blastoise, Galvantula, Terrakion, Dragonite, Whimsicott, Nidoking, and Rotom. So it's a very threatening team. Uh, however, I feel like we have the tools to beat it. However, I'm, it's like a very bipolar matchup. I'm not a big fan of it. However, it could be worse. Uh, so let's just get right into the team that we did decide to bring. So we did bring Concounter with Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Mock Punch, and Knock Off. If we look at the team that he has, um, Drain Punch hits pretty much everything except for Whimsicott, Rotom, Victini, and um, Gavantula. Gavantula is not a threat defensively. The others can be a uh, defensive threat, so I have knockoff and Ice Punish to hit them all respectively. Um, the defense investment I have here with the HP allows me to live a plus two close combat from a Terrakion, which is pretty scary. Um, pretty threatened. Like, um, Terrakion is a very big threat to my team, as we're going to see. I don't really have any great switch ins, as you can see by my team, so I just kind of have to have that there. Um, next up, we have probably my least favorite member of the team. I'm going to get more into this at like the end of the video, but um, we have our Avalog, and Avalog's just like not been doing the best at all. Um, I had ideas for it, for it to wall stuff, however, being a spinner that's weak to rocks is very, very like upsetting for this thing, making it kind of just like not a good Pokemon. Uh, but anyways, we have Aukaberry this week, that way I can take on Fire Blast Dragonite, which I'm almost entirely sure is going to come. Uh, with Dragon Dance, just because I do have the Avalog, and Fire Blast does take that on very, very well. Um, it's also there for stuff like the Weavile, if that gets out of hand. Um, and that's mainly it. Uh, other than that, I guess it's a Rapid Spinner. That's cool. Um, but Avalog, yeah, I just didn't really have much use for it. Well, I do, I do have use for it this matchup. However, I don't like it at all. It's just bad Pokemon. Anyways, we have our Nido King switching or designated Nido King switch in, as well as a possible Victini switch in, um, our Vaporeon, Wakan Berry with Scald, Ice Beam, Wish Protect. Um, now I'm, I ran a lot of Spadef so I don't get too hit out by any Nido King move, even after the Wakan Berry is broken. In hindsight, that was probably a very bad decision on my part, and we're going to see why later in the battle. But next up we have defensive uh, Heatran, kind of my Weavile response, like I'm kind of making fake responses in this prep, as you guys can see, these responses are definitely not the best, um, but you know, it's whatever, um, so we have Stealth Rock, Magrastorm, Earth Power, and Toxic, this thing also responds to the Victini decently well, so that's the reason I brought it, Toxic is there for, of course, the Blastoise and anything else that might get out of hand, uh, Magmastorm, Earth Power, just kind of hit everything except for the Dragonite, um, and Stealth Rock, of course, because it's Stealth Rock. Now I have Scarf Tapu Bulu, and <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about Scarf Tapu Bulu now. In theory, because of this thing's like enormous power, Scarf Tapu Bulu should be a pretty good Pokemon. One sec. Sorry, I just had yeah. Um. Anyways, so it should be a really good Pokemon. Um. However, uh, the reason it's just not is because you're constantly finding yourself in a position where you have to lock yourself into a certain move to get like all the momentum. And all these teams have different switch-ins, and Scarf Tapu Bulu can be kind of predictable in certain matchups because of the all the weaknesses it has. So that was a problem, and um, it kind of cost me versus Turk, and we're gonna see like how it does versus Bird this week. And of course, we just have our monster. 
Sorry, I have like hiccups mid recording. Um, yeah, we have our monster, Bialkazam, um, big kill leader on our team. Psychic Focus Blast and a Power Ice Shadow Ball just hits everything on his team very hard. Um, so that's the team we brought. <clears throat> we could have built this team a little bit better, but I think it's fine. Um, so we're just going to get right into the battle. So you guys are going to see he brings a team of Blastoise, um, Revile, Dragonite, Needle King, Rotom, and Whimsicott. Now, a very threatening team. Uh, right off the bat, the way I want to lead off this game is with my Tapu Bulu, because uh, if I get in on the right Pokemon, I can basically get a kill if I predict right. If I don't, then there is a that that's a problem, of course. Uh, so we're just going to see how we do this matchup. Uh, so I'm going to, as we see, lead off with that, and he leads off with Nino King. Let me just switch sides real quick. Uh, yeah, he leads off with that, um, Nino King. So... I am going to not actually stay in here because I'm either expecting Sash or something with enough HP to live or defensive investment. However, I know since this is a lead Nido King, he's definitely running rocks on this thing, which is kind of annoying for me. Um, but, you know, it's whatever. So we're just going to switch right out of there and go into our Vaporeon, our designated response. Now he has rocks up. That makes Avalug a lot weaker, and even though it's my spinner, like, it's, it's, it's not a good spinner. That's basically just the way I see it. Uh, Stealth Rocks are going to go up, and um, here he goes right into the Whimsicott, and I just go for the Scald, and it does a pretty decent amount of damage. You need to believe that he is offensive Whimsicott, because we don't see leftovers. And you guys are going to see here, as I go into my Heatran on his Whimsicott, he goes for the Energy Ball, which is, of course, a higher base power move than moves like Giga Drain, which still like helps me believe that he is indeed an offensive whimsicott. So what he's gonna do here is he's gonna go into his um Blastoise and I predict that and I go into my um my Tapu Bulu. This was overall a safe play. The reason being if you wanted to go for HP ground there or something, Tapu Bulu was always just another good switch in so good play on my part. And here's where shit just kind of like hits the fan. Since this thing still has its multi scale intact, I decide it's not worth it to click Stone Edge. Big mistake on my part, because this thing takes no damage, and you guys are going to see, he brings an absolutely incredible set versus my team. Like, just such a good set. The, um, you guys are going to see. So, he has leftovers. That's an issue. Um, so, I just go into my counter, counter with quotes around it, because he goes for the Dragon Dance here, and um, that's just a big problem. Uh, here, he doesn't Fire Blast immediately, but he's back at his multi scale, so that's really, really annoying. And I have to go for the Avalanche. I can't get rid of these rocks yet, because he's just so threatening. Uh, for the rest of my team. So the Vaporeon's gonna come in here, and I really, really should have just ran Heal Bell over maybe Skull this week. Um, because you guys are gonna see this, he brings another great set. A set that I've actually used in the past to beat Bulky Waters. It's a sub toxic um, Mega Blastoise. No stab, however, Mega Launcher basically just kind of gives it stab, which is great. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my Concoder as he is going to go for the Aura Sphere, and I do just not want to take a Toxic with that thing, but he does predict me. Um, so Aura Sphere is going to keep coming out, and my Concoder is going to get dangerously low. I do have the Assault Vest, so I can take the hits like decently well. However, it's not like very well, um, which of course I want it to be. I do switch out here into my type of blue, predicting another Aura Sphere. Kind of like the only play I can make, because I really can't let my Concoder get too weak, or else I might just lose to the Weavile. Um, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, and here, I make another dumb play, and I just go right for the Hidden Power Poison versus the Whimsicott instead of expecting him to switch because it probably can't do too much to me. But, oh well. Here is probably the dumbest play I make this whole battle. I go for another HP Poison to try to keep this thing, like, in out of its multi-scale range. And he goes for a DD, and I just gave him so much momentum in one turn, and it's, I don't know, it's just really stupid of me. Um, absolutely just dumb. And I here I basically just have to sack off my Kinkelder. But you guys are going to see, he's going to get back to multi-scale because he does have the freaking fly on his, um, on his Dragonite. So he flies up here. Actually, he doesn't get back to multi-scale, but he might as well get back to multi-scale. And I fly, he flies, and bam, I lose my Kinkelder. So I was going to lose something, but here, um, I know he's, he has Fire Blast. However, since I do go into my Avalog, he should just expect 
that I do have the Aka Berry prepared for him, or something of that nature, or I'm like expecting to live the hit. So here I go for the Rapid Spin. No, I go for yeah, Avalanche. Okay, no, here I predict a sub, and I go for the Rapid Spin. In theory, it was a decent play, but like it just it wasn't great. Um, so yeah, we're going to switch out with our Avalo, because I still need that thing. And we basically just sack off our heat trend here. Um, Chopper Berry, we eat that, but it's not going to help. And he's actually going to outspeed me, even though I do have a little bit of speed on this thing. And it, we're going to die with our heat trend. So that sucks. Uh, but now we have to go into our Tapu Buru and click Horn Leech so that we don't take too much damage from the recoil. And he goes for Ice Beam, and that does a lot to the Tapu Bulu. Um, However, I don't need this thing too incredibly healthy, and here I know that he's going to go into his Dragonite. However, there's really just not much I can do versus that big threat that is the Mega Blastoise. And I gave it back some grassy terrain recovery, so that's like, that's that's just annoying. Um, here I go into my Avalog. He predicts me, goes for the Fire Blast. Not really a prediction, but yeah. And he crits me and he only does that much damage, which is insane. So I guess Avalog did do something okay. And that didn't help me in the battle at all. But, um, yeah, now I'm just kind of, like, realizing that my Vaporeon could probably take on this Dragonite just because of his set. Um, and he's going to go into his Zumzakot on my Ice Beam, and I'm going to do a lot to him, 69%. Um, and, but now, of course, since I do have the Grassy Terrain, it's not going to die. And because of the Burn nerf this generation, he's also not going to die. Uh, so Energy Ball is going to come out here, and here I know another one's coming. However, like, he, or that, or a double, that could also work. Here he goes right into his Weavile, and that was such a ballsy play on his end. Um, and I'm thinking, because he actually does kill me with the knockoff, maybe he might be banded. I didn't calc it, but I'm thinking the Avalog might have been, probably not, though. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go into my Vaporeon, fire off a Wish, and you guys are going to see... Um, I do eat my Wakan Berry here, which is okay, I guess. I didn't need it for anything else, really. But he is going to go into the Blastoise again, and I'm just like, oh, come on. Because every time this thing comes in, it's just more and more of a pain for me to deal with. I have to go into my um, Alakazam. Uh, reason being, I didn't need, I didn't want to take a Toxic. And I knew that was what was coming out here, but that actually didn't come out. He actually just doubles right into his Rotom. So I feel like what's happening is, like... I don't know, I'm just being outplayed. Um, not much is going my way this battle, which it's like to be expected. I'm just, yeah, I'm not playing well. I didn't prep for this battle well at all. And here I'm just thinking maybe my Vaporeon can like possibly win this game. Uh, we do get a bunch of damage on the Nido King, however, it doesn't matter. Uh, but my Alakazam is going to come in here and he is going to go into his Rotom. And he's going to take a butt ton from this. And I'm like, ooh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, my Vaporeon can win this game if it can take on everything else on his team. Um, I need to protect versus the Whimsicott. And I need to take hits from the Weavile really well. Um, but what we're going to see here is because I did run a specially defensive Vaporeon, I don't take that knockoff well at all. I just take so much damage from the knockoff. So you guys are going to just keep seeing is I... I keep trying to take this knockoff, but it just never works. I just constantly take a lot of damage, and um, I'm taking more and more damage every time. I don't know why I even kept this up. I go for the Scald here, and you guys are going to see I do get the burn uh, three times out of three, which is kind of unfortunate, but um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Alakazam, and we actually outspeed this thing, which is kind of crazy. Um, I guess he didn't run enough speed for um, my creep. I believe I crept... I don't know what I crept, I crept something. I crept the Whimsicott, yeah. I hit a Power Ice here, I do a decent amount of damage to this thing. Um, but of course, since he does have the multi-skill, I can't kill it or anything. So, here he just goes for Dragon Dance, Earthquake. That's gonna lock him up the game, because he does have the Scarf Rotom in the back. If he didn't, I actually definitely would've won this game. Um, unless he just had Sucker Punch on his Needle King or something crazy. But yeah, Volusia's just gonna come out here, and I'm just gonna lose this game. Um, so, I didn't play this game very well whatsoever. I didn't prep for this game very well. I got kind of cocky with the matchup. I thought that maybe like it just would would go heavily in my favor. I knew he didn't like the team very much, so I thought that would also be in my favor. Um, but yeah, we just kind of blew it this week. However, after this battle, I, I, I was on tilt before this, and now I'm just kind of off my tilt. 
Um, so I don't really intend to lose many more games this season. Um, I think if I play well and I prep well, then we'll be back in like the top coaches. But right now, we're 3-3 three three plus 1. And uh, that sucks. Uh, Chris took over our division. However, I'm looking forward to the future of our battles. I think that's where everything's just going to kind of shine. So anyways, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next battle. By the way, we're going to be taking on the Angels of Behem next week. Very, very threatening team. I believe it's 6-0 right now. So I I'm definitely scared. But yeah, I'll uh, see you guys next week.